Today, guys, I'm going to show you how to give your AI agents in N8N human-like memory. So if you've been building an N8N, chances are you've added their simple memory tool, which is just integrated already in the N8N platform. But the problem with that simple memory tool is that the memory never gets stored and the context always gets forgotten after the five messages get sent. And that doesn't allow our AI agents to actually remember the history of the conversations that it's had. And that's a big problem. But with this new memory tool called Zep, our AI agents will be able to store all of that information from the conversations and plot it into a user relational graph. And what this relational graph allows the agents to do is analyze and understand in a deep, deep way how everything is working in a specific workflow. And so what you guys are seeing here is my chief database agent. And I'm just going to show you guys how it works with the ZEP model. And then I want to show you just how freaking powerful this is. So if I were to just click out of the simple memory and connect the memory tool to ZEP, we can now send in a prompt. We just go like, hey, do you know who I am? And since this is my first conversation with this memory store, it doesn't know who I am. So now I'm going to let it know. I'm going to say, hey, you know, my name is Kevin. I run the No Code Academy and Creator OS AI Startup. You are the chief database agent in my operating system. And we're going to send that in. And so this response is just the beginning of this agent actually becoming smarter and actually aware of who I am. So it goes, hello, Kevin, it's a pleasure to connect with you. I understand you run the NoCode Academy and Creator OS startup as the chief database agent in your operating system. My role is to help you analyze your data from various sources, including your social media analytics, your agent performance data, and provide any insights. And so I would say that's enough information to show you guys what's happening on the back end. So here we are in Zep and we can see the user relational graph. And now it's starting to plot all of these different endpoints that it's starting to understand about the workflow that it has access to. So it understands that it is an AI assistant, has access to the social media analytics. It is the database agent. And we can see that that defining variable is that it is the database agent and it is inside of the operating system. And the more conversations that we have with this, the more that it will actually know. So it also knows that Kevin runs the no code Academy and the creator OS startup. And so as conversations continue, this thing gets smarter. And what I want to now show you guys is a couple of examples of how this thing actually gets smarter by checking some data in the tables. So I'm just going to say, can you check the AI agent tables and summarize their stats for me, please? And now it's going to go grab all three of the tables simultaneously. It'll go back to the Gemini model. And now our ZEP user relational graph should actually have expanded. And so now that we got the response back in literally like 10 seconds, we can tell that the ZEP graph has also been updated. So if we head over to the ZEP graph on the back end and we click the refresh, we can now see that there's some new nodes that have been added. So the new node that was added is the agent performance data. Now we can open up each one of these nodes and it will actually tell us about this. So what is the AI agent performance data? It is the entity to generic related performance metrics with no specific details provided in the current message. But as we have more conversations, it'll understand what the agent performance data is. And so now if we go back to the conversation and we tell it the agent performance data tracks the following AI agents, LinkedIn outreach connections, Twitter outreach messages, long form to short video editing. And we're going to send that in. And all this is going to do is train the ZEP graph. And so if we go back to the ZEP graph, once it's finished and we hit refresh, we can now see that the agent has access and can report on the Twitter outreach agent. It can report on the LinkedIn outreach agent, and it can report on the long form to shorts agent. And so over time, this user relational graph gets smarter and smarter and smarter. And so now we're going to build your first AI rag agent from scratch. But I just want to break down a couple of examples of how this rag system is used in day to day workflows that clients are actually paying for. So the first one is conversational agents. So on on this channel, I showed you guys how to build a Facebook Messenger agent that responds to all messages that it receives, but now it can store the user ID of the people that are actually communicating with us. And in that way, the agent is able to track all of the different conversations with every single person that has messaged us, and that's going to make our agents a lot smarter when it's doing the responses. Now, this exact same thing can happen with our Gmail, with our WhatsApp, with our Discord, with our Slacks. And so the first way that the Z 
Zep memory tool really helps our AI agents is with the outbound conversations. Now the next one is with our internal workflows. So one prompt that I wanna show you guys here is the social messages prompt. So I just sent in a prompt that says, check my social messages table and summarize everything that's happened. Let me know about any creator OS leads as well. And so it checked the social messages table. It then went to the Zep memory and then it went to the Google Gemini flash and now we got our response. And so here it says, you have a total of 40 messages across Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, blah, 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 blah. And then it starts talking about individual people. So we have like Clark Hardy, we have Ashton, we have Lawson, we have Abidi. And then it talks about the creator OS leads. We have Johnny, no code J, we have all these other people. But if we go to the back end and we look at the relational graph, it is now actually gonna be storing those people in the graph as well. Now that the agent was able to identify all of the different leads, our Zep backend also knows about all of these different people. And so as the conversations with these leads continue to expand, our Zep backend is also going to expand its understanding. And so we will always be able to keep real time data on our leads and the conversations that are happening. And again, that's just one example. Now guys, I'm gonna build this entire thing from scratch. And so I'm just gonna go to NADN and we're just going to sign in. Now this first RAG agent is just going to be a very simple RAG agent to show you guys how the AI agent's brain can actually expand and get smarter over time. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a workflow, but the trigger here guys is just going to be on chat message. So the first thing we wanna do is open up that first step and we're gonna click on chat message. Then the next thing we're gonna do guys is add in our AI agent and we're gonna add the Gemini flash model for this because it's free. So might as well save a couple of you know, API tokens, there we go. And now I'm gonna add in my Zep memory. And so if I didn't sign up to Zep previously, what I would do is I would head over to the Zep API key um, form and I would hit the quick start Zep documentations and then I would log in to the dashboard. Once you're in the dashboard guys, you just wanna scroll down when you're on the project feed and you're gonna be able to create a new key or add a new key. Once you do that, you can then copy that API key like we have right here and we can head back to NADN. Now that we're in NADN, I'm gonna click create new credential. I'm gonna add in that API key and I'm going to allow it to be stored in the cloud on NADN. And then you just wanna click save and connect your Zep account. Cool. So once you do that guys, you can click out and we can actually start prompting. And so this agent has no idea who we are, what we do and everything like that. And so what I wanna show you guys is how the Zep backend can actually start growing its knowledge base just from a conversation. And so if I just send in this prompt that says, hey, my name's Kev, I run Creator OS and the No Code Academy. I love to play golf, make videos, work out, hang out with friends and go to comedy. We got this response back that says, all right, Kev, you got a great mix of entrepreneurial drive and fun hobbies, blah, 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 blah. And it starts creating a conversation with us. Now, if we go to the back end on Zep, we can start seeing what's happening with our user relational graph for this specific agent. And so if we go to the Zep website and we click on users, we can see that new user conversation has happened right here on July 15th. And so we're just going to open up that user ID and then we're gonna open up the graph. And so now we can see the graph and in the middle is basically Kev or in another way it has me here, but this is the conversation ID that I've been using it with this agent that we just started. And so it knows that this user likes to make videos, likes to play golf, runs Creator OS, likes to hang out with friends, runs the No Code Academy, likes to go to comedy shows, and likes to work out. And so if this was a conversational agent, it will now know all of these different things about me. And so if I were to go like, hey, tell me you know, a plan for the weekend that I should do, it now knows a couple of the things. So it could be like, hey, Kev, you probably wanna invite your friends to go golfing on Friday, and then maybe you guys wanna go to a comedy show at night. And that's just based off of the information that it has from that first message. And so as the messages expand, it's able to then create a really, really complex user relational graph. And in future videos, I'm gonna show you guys how these relational graphs can actually be simplified because right now we're looking at a user relational graph that only has like eight nodes. But as you start to prompt it, this, this thing can literally expand into like 10,000 different nodes. And so you don't want all of that information coming back to your AI agent. You just want the most relevant information. And so you can set limits on the amount of data that is being received and passed back to the AI agent. And so let's say there was 10,000 nodes in this user relational graph. And I sent in a prompt that said, you know, plan out my weekend with all of the different information that you have about me. It will then look at all of the different information about me and it should only pull back three of the most relevant things. 
And so out of these nodes here, if it had to pull three of them from that prompt, it would pull golf, it would pull friends, and it would pull comedy because these are the most relevant things for my fun time that I want to do on the weekends. And so I hope this helped guys, because I'm telling you right now, you need to integrate ZEP or some type of long form memory for your AI agents, or you will get left behind and good luck building.